Um, we, Happy New Year. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, we are here with a fun topic, a fresh topic, one that I think is increasing in importance in 2016 and beyond, and that is how to humanize your marketing, how to humanize your marketing um, to drive more brand visibility in today's oversaturated marketplace, oversaturated online noisy marketplace, and how to drive more brand SEO value for yourself. Um, so my name is Jackie Bates. I'm Link Connector's Director of Marketing, and I'm here today with Helen Fang with coupons.com. Let's go ahead and get started. So it is a small world after all. Facebook reports that they have about one and a half billion monthly active users. Across the four largest social platforms, we see about two and a half billion monthly active users and a valuation of about $300 billion. Consumers have never been so connected as they are today, 24 seven across numerous channels, devices, and formats. And this has brought about a real catalyst of change for the marketing world as well, and we're gonna talk about that. So in short, in 2015, the population of Facebook has grown to be greater than the population of China. And Facebook is now considered to be the largest country. So as a result of this, um, as a result of this hyper-connected world that we live in, we are seeing an explosion of content. And this makes sense, right? So as marketers vie for attention among all this noise, consumers are overwhelmed with images, sales pitches, and content. Fast Company tells us that the average consumer sees over 5,000 ads every day. Each second, two blogs are launched. So consumers are really weary of, a, of another brand sending them more emails into their already cluttered lives. Consumers are desiring a more authentic, emotional connection with the brands that they support. Brian Kramer tells us that this problem is just getting worse. So he predicts that in the next year, the amount of content we have today will actually double in size. And this will bring about a true renaissance for much needed creativity. So yes, as marketers, we are so empowered today. We have all kinds of technology at our fingertips, channels and devices to push content out through, but we can no longer expect to get anything back in return. Adweek tells us people are already numb. So the good news is, is that this levels the playing field. So we are all in this oversaturated, noisy online environment together, and we all have a chance at getting it right. So how are we gonna do that? Brands that can humanize themselves are the ones that are gonna stand out. So how do you humanize your marketing? In a nutshell, you're gonna need to make it literally live. And that begins with listening. So a brand's wrecking ball is not listening. First, you have to get to know your audience before you begin talking to them. So part of that is social listening. Sorry, this microphone. Um, part of that is social listening. So through social listening, marketers have a wealth of information at their fingertips. They can uh, find out what their consumers, competitors, competitors, consumers, and prospects are saying. They can gain insight into um, what buyers are seeking. They can find out what the market is willing to pay for something um, and uh, what else buyers are seeking that's not currently available. They can find out how happy their customers are or how happy their competitors' customers customers are, they can find out, um, uh, connect and retain uh, customers, and, and much more. We have access to pre-sales support through social listening. So um, we know that buyers turn to content before buying. We know that because we're buyers and we go look at online reviews and do our homework before making a big purchase. So at a minimum, we want to know what kind of content our pros prospective buyers are being exposed to and influenced by um, out there. One, um, one aspect of social influence or principle of social influence is called social proof. And social proof tells us that we as humans find out what is true and correct by finding out what other people think is true and correct. So the all-powerful peer, the power of the peer. 
um, brand co-ownership, your brand is consumed in hundreds of places online. You no longer just own your brand. Through our socially connected customers, um, we are out there creating online reviews, social network activity, word of mouth. Um, your audiences, your multiple audiences are defining you, so you need to have a grasp um, of how your brand is being portrayed and defined um, out there. Get on the phone, and Helen's gonna talk uh, more about this point, but actually have a real conversation with your audience, either in person or on the phone, um, but reach out and get to know them. So now that we know who our audience is, where they are in the marketplace and what their needs are, now we can begin to meaningfully interact with them. So now we have a chance at creating some content that's going to resonate. So the sweet spot here is where your brand value and your um, customer needs intersect, that intersection point, those key moments. Um, Helen's gonna talk a lot about, more about those key moments as well. Um, but basically keep your message customer-centric, not it's about them, not you. You wanna cultivate likability and trust in a nutshell. Um, another principle of influence is liking. So we say yes to people that we know and like, people who are similar to us, people who share um, similar interests as we share, those are the people we say yes to. Um, when this is done right, when we get the content right, what we get is earned media. So this is a vouch of confidence in the form of um, online reviews, positive reviews, sharing of content, um, all this kind of positive uh, content that's going to build your reputation um, and your brand. One way to cultivate likability um, is through brand storytelling. So this is using great stories to compel people to create emotional connections to your brand. Again, cultivating that likability. Um, now, going viral, this is like going for the gold um, in the online, in online marketing, right? When we all love to have been the guy behind um, the ice bucket challenge. So when it really kind of tunes in with the brand and is authentic, there's a human element about it, people want to see it succeed. When companies can demonstrate sympathy and sensitivity towards things that their customers care about, they're going to have a strategic advantage here. Think End the Mommy Wars by Similac. That really resonated with me. Um, so in a nutshell, conversions are really byproducts of great relationships. And companies that can create these emotional connections with their consumers are the ones that, um, that are going to be ahead in the long run. So SEO is following suit. Search is really about uh, relationships as well, with key SEO factors like trust, authority, engagement, reputation. We are seeing that increasingly search activity factors into search, or social activity rather, social activity factors into search rankings. In general, you want a good online reputation and a solid sharing of your content across numerous social platforms. Um, so SEO is, is less about technical strategies as time goes by and more about um, relationship building. Just to pull out reputation here for a second, that ties back in nicely with brand co-ownership. How are your audiences defining you? If you get a negative online review, are you quickly responding to it with the intention of salvaging that relationship and building some um, loyalty with, with that relationship? Um, and so I'm going to close my piece here with a, with a quote. Um, this quote really resonates with me, and I think it ties in nicely um, with this message here. Um, and it says, so the great gift of conversation lies less in displaying it ourselves than in drawing it out of others. He who leaves your company pleased with himself and his own cleverness is perfectly well pleased with you. Um, we're going to turn it over to coupons.com right now, and Helen's going to talk about how they humanize their brand to stand out. Hey, guys. How many of you have heard of coupons.com? can leave now. No, I'm kidding. Um, so my name is Helen Fang. I'm the general manager of e-commerce at Coupons. We've been in business for a very long time, 17 years in fact, and we've spent a really long time building our brand. 
Uh, we have a great domain. Um, but you know, from that domain, we've been we've worked really hard to to get a lot of users to our site, um, 17 million plus per month, in fact. But we still face challenges, right? And, and to kind of what Jackie was saying earlier, like what I love about online and what I love about social is it flattens the um, the, the levels of the playing field. Any business can compete with a coupons.com, a Nike, a General Mills, Cheerios. I, I really, really firmly believe this. And in some ways, we almost want to test it ourselves, right? So coupons.com, um, We've, you know, we're, we're, we have a wide breadth of offers um, for everything from handbags to box of cereal. Great. But the challenge is that these offers are super commoditized. We have a ton of affiliates that promote our offers. There's a lot of coupon sites out there. Um, and our site was actually built to optimize for transactions. And this is important because what we want the user to do when they come to our site is click on a printable coupon, go print a coupon, go get a coupon code, which leaves very little inventory left for the human aspect, right, of why, why are you here? Why should you keep coming back? How can we help you? And so this is something I'm super passionate about. I don't control the whole site. I just control a piece of it. And so um, you know, what I've been kind of thinking about is how do we continue and how do we really continue to stand out as a brand given how crowded it is out there? Um, without the human element, I don't think that's possible. And that's a case that you know, I've been trying to make internally to our internal stakeholders for a very long time. And um, I was given the opportunity to do something about it, right? which is why such a great company. Um, so what we did was we created an online magazine called The Good Stuff. Basically, I couldn't touch most of the site, so what I did was I created something new off of the site. And so The Good Stuff is an online magazine. It's about a year old, um, and we launched it from scratch. It's a WordPress installation. And um, our strategy is actually very simple. Our content strategy is very simple. Coupons and savings isn't generally sexy content. I mean, I think it's pretty sexy, but most people don't think like coupon, how to save, savings 101, um, super sexy, right? But I think there's, there's a way to make it really interesting. Um, and one is informative content. So content that's practical and um, you know, easy savings tips for, for readers. And what we did was we partnered with um, an award-winning journalist. Her name is Jeanette Pavini. She's won a bunch of Emmys. She writes for Market Watch. And what I love about Jeanette is nobody cares about Helen Fang. Nobody cares about my savings advice because you guys don't know me. I don't have any social proof. I don't have the credentials, right? But by, by partnering with Jeanette, um, we're able to work with her on writing really great content for us and then speaking about that content when she's on um, media, on Today Show, on um, USA Day Day, et cetera. So th that's, she really you know, helps us write and come up with like practical, easy, consumer savings tips and advice. Where it gets fun is, the, is inspirational content, right? So again, I'm like saving money, not super sexy. But I think talking about aspirations and inspiration can be really fun and can be really sexy. And that's things like DIY and you know, recipes. It's January, everyone, myself included, trying to lose a few pounds. So what we know resonates really well is how to take your favorite, most favorite dish, macaroni and cheese for me, and turn it into something that's less than 500 calories. People love it, and, this, and if you make that a really interesting piece full of rich content and not just clickbait, people will thank you for it and they'll keep coming back. They'll sign up for your newsletters. Trust us, it's worked. Um, another area that we've been really focusing on is deal content. So it's you know, not just, hey, buy this bag, it's 70% it's off, who cares? Um, buy this bag because it has all of these great features and the color is super great and here's five different ways you can wear it that might be something that's more interesting, right? So we're in a super, super saturated space. One of our biggest challenges is getting people to care about what we write. Um, we can push it out to 17 million uniques a month, sure. But um, that, I think, still makes us have to make sure our content is really valuable and really worth, um, worth reading. Um, so our findings. Um, and these are kind of the key lessons I've learned over the last year in trying to do this. What, what I've always found really interesting coming to conferences and listening to people on the platform is like, I'm gonna tell you how to do this and it's gonna be so great or so easy and here's the three things to do. You know what though, doing it is really freaking hard. And so um, I wanna share a little bit about what I learned in, in, in trying to do this because literally I was, 
actually doing some writing um, in the beginning before we found wonderful writers. Um, so what we've learned is that um, creating authentic on-brand content is hard. Um, to the right is an image with a bunch of different X's. These, this is all content we've actually written. It's still on the good stuff. You can go check it out right now. But guess what? It didn't work. We tried. We really tried to make it work. We promoted it. We put money behind promoting it. It didn't work. Um, but it's good. It's okay to fail, right? And so now we know the types of content that um, doesn't really resonate with our audience. And what we found in particular was fashion. Um, fashion, high fashion, um, fashion trends doesn't really work as well for our audience. Um, and I think the second piece is when we started getting it right, when we started getting that engagement level up, and we, is when we um, started to have a conversation with our readers and wasn't just taking kind of the, here's a persona research that coupons.com has done and let's figure out what to do it. But no, like actually pick up a phone, talk to people who are reading our content and um, ask them, what's good, what's bad? What, what are you reading currently? What are the last five articles you clicked on um, from your Facebook page? We've learned so much just from doing that. Um, and you know, in justifying, why should we do this? How is this gonna make us money? Um, what I found is that you, know, you, you can definitely inflate the numbers and you can go and buy lots of traffic. We were able to buy traffic for three cents, two cents a click coming in, but that traffic's crap. People don't stick around, they bounce fast, and that actually, I think, negatively impacts your, um, you know, your ultimate goals. And so really what I've been using is, is, is thinking about how can we use the good stuff to really bring people into the top of the funnel and engage them, um, which is a, a challenge, I think, for coupons.com because people already know of us or they're searching for us um, in Google and they come, they click, they get what they need to leave. They're not really engaging with us at the level that we need to. So, um, results. We, I can't go into too, much, too, too many numbers, we are a public company, but I am really, really proud of, of the success that we've achieved because literally it was, let's install WordPress to let's try a bunch of different content um, and figure out what worked, um, put some paid budget behind, not a big budget, small paid budget behind it, and let's see what we can do. Um, and so in um, a year, we've been able to, de de um, to drive triple digit you know, organic um, traffic growth. One of my proudest moments, two of my proudest moments, were when our content actually outranked Google News. Freaking Google News, that's awesome, right? Um, and really proud because the content that did outrank Google News um, took us hours and hours and hours to produce. So um, another piece that, another result of that is, you know, we were able to grow our email subscribers for just the good stuff from a base of zero to um, tens of thousands in less than six months. And again, um, I think this is important because yes, even though coupons.com, we have millions of people subscribed to our emails, the good stuff had nothing. We really started out from scratch. We had the benefit of being attached to coupons.com, but we really approached it like one of you guys, like a blogger trying to, you know, trying to start something new, figuring out what, it, what works, iterating on top of it, and promoting it. Um, so very proud of those numbers because those are beaters, those are people who really want to learn more from, from us, read more content from us. So what's next? And there's a lot. <laughs> there's a lot that we have to do. Um, it's just, you know, one of the biggest things is really continuing the conversation with our readers and understanding what it is that they, what they want, what they want to read. Again, we're in such a saturated the space and there's so much stuff out there a lot of really bad stuff a lot of really good stuff too so trying to figure out how to stand out is is very challenging um, but I think that starts with talking to our having those conversations with our readers um, and what another important lesson that I've learned is in the beginning we're producing tons of content like three four five articles a day and it was exhausting and editing that finding images and all that is really hard we had a very small team that was doing this so our new approach is really spending hours and hours still on one piece of content, one solid piece of content, and then coming up with a mini marketing strategy for that piece of content. So not just for the, not the story, not the article, not just the story, not just the article, but how, am I, how are we going to talk about it on Facebook, on Twitter, in our, in our emails, the coupons.com emails, emails to our readers. There's a lot to think about, actually. And I think when you start taking that mindset of, putting a marketing plan behind every single piece of content, it makes you stop and it makes you think, okay, I better produce something really good. Um, 
And so that is, and, and the last piece is really just promoting, right? It's not just if you put it out there, they will come, they won't. We tried that too. Um, we had to promote the heck out of it. And you know, I work for a large company, so I had to actually work with a lot of internal stakeholders, email team, for example, social team, and get in front of them and say, content matters, here's why. Um, here are the metrics I'm trying to reach, and um, this is why you should give us some precious inventory in the next email or on our Facebook fan page um, to, to promote our content. And, and what's great is that I've now talked to a lot of internal stakeholders, so I didn't talk to as much before, but also it's working. People are finding that the content that we're producing is really driving the engagement that, um, that really kind of aligns to everyone's corporate business goals. So um, we talked a little bit about we're content, about humanizing, about SEO, but to connect it all together, I think about it, my background is SEO. Um, if we don't humanize our brand, if we don't stand out, then, then users can't find you, users don't know about you, and, and search engines certainly will not, right? So I think humanizing in your brand is truly a long-term investment. It's not gonna be instant, like, you know, again, we've, been at this for a year with the good stuff. We found some success, but a lot of things didn't work, and we have to continue to work at it. But I think it's it's critical for us um, because ne tomorrow, next month, Google might release an algorithm that uh, displays coupon codes in search results, okay, or even or any information. They're already doing that with a lot of content. They they um, are taking kind of the rich snippet and showing that. So that's going to hurt a lot of affiliates. Um, that's going to hurt us if they do that, right? So one thing that can help me build a, a defensible moat around my business is to not rely just on Google to deliver me traffic to you know, core coupon pages, but to really think about building content that can rank for various types of keywords, again, top of funnel, bringing people into that, into that um, content, and then driving them to the coupons or whatever it is that's actually gonna help me make money. Um, because what Google doesn't do a super great job of yet is really getting to um, these specific moments um, that people are trying to, um, I'll talk about that just a little bit, sorry. Okay, um, and this is kind of the, a template for how to do this. Um, it took me a while to come up with it. I know it seems really simple, but we went through all of these steps. And, um, and I think this is something a business of any size can do. So first is um, learning about your audience. I know we hear that all the time. What does that mean? So primary, secondary research, right? Get down to basics. Even if you don't have an audience, that's okay. Who are you trying to reach? Um, and if you do have one, great. Can you find out more for them, right? What has Forrester um, published? What are studies out there um, that you can tap into and read? Launch a survey. It's super cheap, easy to launch a survey. Um, incentivize people with you know $25 Amazon gift card. That's great. But, but don't stop there. Please don't stop there. Um, think about primary research, too. And literally, um, I took time out of my day. And I picked up the phone, and I actually called 30 people. So what we learned from our secondary research is that our core audience is moms, moms who um, have two or more kids in their household. And so I used a bunch of different channels, including my own Facebook page. And I said, hey, are you a mom? Do you have kids? Well, obviously. Um, can't, you know, under the age of, I think it was like under the age of 12 or 13, um, I, I want to talk to you. And each day for a month, I set aside 30 minutes and I spoke to 30 moms. And I didn't ask them questions like, you know, what are you, what are you gonna buy next? How can I help you save on a handbag? Or what kind of cereal does your family eat? I just asked them a very, very simple question. And I asked them, take me through a day in your life. Um, from the moment you wake up to the moment you, went, you go to bed. And that was, uh, that those conversations um, were so helpful because it was really able to help me understand what matters to mom and pick up nuances that I wouldn't be able to get in a survey. Um, and with those nuances, what it helped me realize are the key moments I was talking about in the, uh, in the previous slide of when, when coupons.com, when we could actually interact with that mom during a moment that we may not have realized in the past. Um, so that the building, when, after we were able to actually find those key moments, um, I took that, that information back to 
the, the Good Stuff team. And we are then able to create content that was, that's going to help them create, uh, sorry, to create um, topics that address these, these key moments. And it's still a work in progress. I can put this up here and hopefully you guys take a picture of it, go home and try it. It's really hard. <laughs> it's really hard to do this. Um, but have a conversation. Um, I look at it as you know, having a conversation with a friend. Don't think of it as me, I'm a salesperson, trying to shove some coupons down your throat. It's really, hey, what, what matters to you today? What matters to you over the weekend? What are you doing with your kids? Um, and then from there, you can understand what are they shopping for, a refrigerator, a pair of pants, um, you know, looking for a new vacation idea. And then once you understand that, then you understand their decision-making process, and then figure out, you can almost diagram this out how my brand or how my business or how my blog is going to address those specific moments. And the great thing about moments is not just about head terms, right? It's not just coupons, Macy's coupons, grocery coupons. It's really long questions like, like um, is, is uh, Cancun a great place to bring kids under the age of four, right? You can really go after long-term questions that address specific moments in, um, in, a, in, in your user's journey. shopping for a new washing machine, so. <laughs> um, so to, uh, to recap here, we are living in an oversaturated marketplace like we talked about. Two blogs are created every second. Um, the brands that are going to stand out are the ones that are humanizing themselves. First, you're going to listen to your audience, get to know them, then meaningfully interact um, with, auth with authentic um, content that has a chance at now resonating now that you know who your audience is. Um, increasingly, we see search content um, and social converging to achieve the same goals. Um, and do it like coupons.com. So uh, really get to know your audience intimately, build out those key moments, find out what their needs are and when they're interacting with your brand, um, and, and craft excellent content um, that specifically addresses those moments. Um, and don't forget to test. Um, and then finally, humanizing um, your content is also all about SEO. So um, humanizing your content is a great way to um, build resilience to all the algorithm updates of Google um, and to build a long-term defensible brand for yourself. Thanks so much, guys. I think we are at the end here. Um, two minutes for um, any questions. If anybody has any questions, sure. Can you come to the, yeah. Do you think it's better to have uh, one voice, one person who speaks to the whole audience from your brand, or do you think that the brand itself can be that voice? Maybe like assign one person and people interact with that person? Um, I think it depends on um, the persona, so your audience segmentation. So do you have a lot of different um, people who are coming to your site. Are you going after many different um, audiences? I think for every single segment that you're able to define, you should have, uh, a, my personal opinion, a specific person, a specific spokesperson uh, or voice that speaks to that, um, that audience. And that's actually something that we are <coughs> going to build out for next year because even within moms, right, huge wide spectrum, we've pulled out one version of a mom. Her name is Lily. We know everything about her. Um, and Lily is going to be the voice that speaks to those like her. But we, we imagine that we're probably going to end up building out four or five different type of mom voices for coupons.com. Awesome. Thanks so much, guys. Yeah. Thanks, guys.